Setting goals and looking ahead to your upcoming year has incredible benefits. Your business plan acts as a roadmap to all of the goals you set, be it your daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, or your yearly goals. But it also provides you an opportunity to look at all the projects that you need to do that are geared towards meeting those goals, including those small daily tasks that we do every day to move the needle on our businesses. In last week's video, we talked about setting the stage at your business plan retreat by looking at the year that was. In today's video, we're tackling the fun stuff and we're looking ahead to your upcoming year. Stick around to learn the six considerations you should keep in mind when planning your yearly goals at your business plan retreat. Hey everyone, it's Leanne, and in the last few videos, we've talked about being intentional by creating a business plan retreat so that you can set the goals for the year ahead without any distractions. In last week's video, we talked about setting the stage at your retreat by taking a look back at your past year and cataloging all the learnings and all of the things that you accomplished. If you'd like to view that video, you can find it right up here. In the week before that, we even talked about why we should go on a business plan retreat and all the benefits that come from taking those two intentional days to set towards your intentions. If you want to view that video, you can find that up here as well. In this video, we're tackling the fun stuff and that's looking ahead at setting our goals. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on that little bell to be notified of new content. We're looking at all things LinkedIn and personal branding for the hospitality industry, and I don't want you to miss a thing. So let's look at some of the things that you should consider for your upcoming year. Consideration number one, this is something that I like to do every year that really sets the tone for my year. And I like to find three words that define my upcoming year. These words really capture the essence of what it is that I want to accomplish and achieve in the year ahead. In years past, I've used words like reimagine or evolve or better or intentional. This year, I chose to play off the letter P for my words of the year. So my upcoming words that will provide some inspiration for me include patience, purpose, and prayer. Find your own words that resonate with you and use those as your guiding principles when setting your goals for the year. Which brings us to consideration number two. Consideration number two is setting some North Star goals, also known as those big, hairy, audacious goals. These goals are lofty and are not meant to be accomplished in the next calendar year, but rather take two to five years to actually achieve these goals. These goals are a lot about it not being the destination, but rather the journey towards achieving these goals. There are many steps involved in achieving these goals and a lot of hours of work, but there's such a great payoff in the end as you learn so much along the journey. Some examples of big, hairy, audacious goals that could work for you maybe include writing and publishing a book, or perhaps speaking on a large conference stage. Or maybe your large North Star goal is to achieve that promotion that you've been striving for. The next consideration are your yearly goals. These are the things you can achieve in this upcoming calendar year, and they typically follow the SMART goal framework of being specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-based. Yearly goals will feed into your larger North Star goals. They serve as stepping stones to accomplishing those bigger goals. But caution, please set no more than 10 strong yearly goals to ensure that you have the bandwidth to achieve what you're setting out to do. So perhaps if you set a goal of writing and publishing a book, one of your yearly goals might be to start a blog and publish 40 posts to that blog. The fourth consideration is to break up that yearly goal into quarterly goals or projects. These milestone projects should help you achieve your larger yearly goal and can be accomplished in roughly 12 weeks or less. 
In this way, the larger yearly goal has now essentially become four or five smaller goals and much more easily digestible and doable as we look at our calendar and our resources. So if your yearly goal is to create a blog and publish some posts, perhaps your Q1 project would be to learn a blog platform and get familiar with how to create your content. The fifth consideration is your financial goals. Again, we all work to earn revenue to support our families. So take a look at the different revenue streams that are coming into your business or into your uh, job position and start to plot out how much revenue you're receiving in each revenue stream towards meeting your financial goals. The final consideration is looking at those other projects that you want to tackle. Perhaps you haven't set a yearly goal or even a North Star goal that would support this project, but it's something that you want to learn and something that you want to sink your teeth into. Don't lose sight of that as you set your yearly goals. Aside from your vocational or business goals, you may also want to look at the goals you set in other domains in the year ahead. Our life is made up of a number of different aspects, also known as domains. And if you want to take a domain assessment, I highly recommend you check out Michael Hyatt's Life Score Assessment Tool. This tool will give you a snapshot of all of your life's domains as it stands now and maybe give you some hints on what you should be working towards in the upcoming year. These domains can include spiritual, intellectual, emotional or mental, physical, marital, parental, social or avocational goals. The avocational goals that I like to include on my business plan include things like books that I want to read or professional development courses I want to take or even memberships that I want to belong to. You can learn more and find examples of different goals in all of the life's domains if you check out the blog post that accompanies this video. And finally, when you are finished your look ahead, make sure that you post your business plan in a place where it can be easily referenced. Perhaps you can add it as a tab on your Google so that it opens up each morning for you to review. Or maybe print a physical copy and post it on your bulletin board. Don't forget to schedule a quarterly or even monthly and weekly review of your business plan and start to plot out your projects, perhaps using the full focus planner as a way of staying on top of your daily, weekly, quarterly, and yearly goals. If the way that you set your goals for the upcoming year looks different than the outline I've just provided, I would love to hear from you. Drop me a line and let me know your success stories when it comes to your business plan retreat or setting your business goals up for the upcoming year. And if this is your first time doing a business plan retreat and you need an agenda to get you started, head on over to leannecalderwood.com forward slash sample agendas to download a template that you can use and edit to create your own retreat agenda. My friend, whatever your goal structure looks like, I wish you much help, happiness, and joy in the upcoming year. Thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.